Good morning. It's Thursday, December 10, 2020. It's time for the local news for today. My name is Shanine Wilfrid. In the news today, International Genocide Prevention Day commemorated, violence against women must be contained, agriculture in the district of Saramaka should be modernized, and Psychiatric Center honored jubilarians and pensioners. The United Nations has established December 9 as International Genocide Prevention Day. Genocide is a crime in international law and common equivalent to the mass murder of a specific group. Although there have been no mass murders in Suriname, Dil Sharman, chairman of the Standing Committee on Human Rights in the National Assembly, reflected on this day. According to Sharman, it is good to have laws and regulation in this area, but he is committed to raising awareness about genocide. Henry MacDonald, ex-president of the Social Humanitarian and Cultural Committee in the period 2012-2013 of the 67th General Assembly of the UN, indicates that the committee is focusing on addressing human rights issues, the most common areas of genocide are Africa and Asia. According to MacDonald, racial discrimination could be a possible cause of this genocide. McDonald also warns against negative social media outbursts. It happens repeatedly that Surinamese choose to treat each other negatively on various digital platforms. McDonald sees this phenomenon as a concern. Del Sharman believes that negative treatment on social media can be avoided. According to him, the change must start at home with education. He argues for Surinamese to get along more with each other and treat each other with more love. Violence against women must be contained. Solution models have been put forward for this by Minister Kenneth Amoksi of Justice and Police. According to him, awareness can be increased within society, but the legislation also needs to be adjusted. Humphrey Naden, former police spokesman, says up to October, eight fatalities of female violence have already been recorded for this year. However, the rates of violence against women continue to increase. According to Minister Bronto Sumohajo of Home Affairs, in charge of gender policy, this has various causes. He wants to make an effort to increase awareness. The Elsa Heinar Hewitt Foundation, which provides legal assistance to women, applauds the various government initiatives. Although there is a clear change within the government, it is still not the case with the private sector. The situation could change if the bill Violence Against Women is adopted by Parliament. Yesterday, the referral pathway Suriname, a hedge for victims of violence, was launched on the pier, thereby also raising awareness of violence against women. Agriculture in the Saramaka district needs to be modernized. That is according to District Commissioner Shireen Bansi Durga. She wants to involve the youth again, but the way agriculture is done must also change. On October 2, the Santoki Brunswick administration paid a visit to the district. President Chandrika Prasad Santoki noticed that agriculture is still practiced in the old way. According to him, young people will only be attracted when this sector becomes modernized. The education system must therefore be adapted accordingly. During the visit, Vice President Ronnie Brunswick argued for the fate of the farmers. He suggested that a number of things should be sorted out by the government, including capital and markets. District Commissioner Bansi has already held talks with the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock and Fisheries to adapt current projects in a modern way. The Psychiatric Center Suriname PCS has honored jubilarians and pensioners yesterday for their contribution and services rendered in the period 2019-2020. Due to the prevailing COVID-19 pandemic and applicable protocols, the celebrations take place over several days. Yesterday, the workers with 5 and 15 years of service were decorated. General Manager Raj Datnanan Singh thanked them for their services despite the financial situation of the center. Union President Carmen Brondenstein encouraged the honor to continue their service. As a former employee, she says she consciously chose for this work. 
Perseverance and working to build the institution are important keys for employees so that they can look back with pride at their contribution during their service period. The ceremony ended with a congratulatory message from the head of human resource management. A total of 152 employees with 5 to 40 years of services are honored, including 9 pensioners. And these were the local updates for today. Thank you for watching. Tomorrow we will be back with more updates. Have a nice day. Goodbye.